Welcome back. This is video two um, in a two-part video series on learning styles. This segment is going to be about situations that affect your learning styles. Um, hopefully uh, you are going to start identifying what, what works best for you as you also identify um, which type of learner you are. Now, there are situations that can affect learning style. One of those is study location. Where you choose to study matters. Um, some of you are going to discover that you are a very traditional setting student. Um, others of you are going to discover that you are less traditional in that sense. So where you study is important. So let's talk about the difference between traditional and non-traditional. Traditional is, say, a desk or a table, a hard surface, and a chair. Not a comfy chair like a chair in the living room, but a, a desk chair or a hard chair at the dining room table. Non-traditional is a more relaxed area. You're the students that truly can study on the couch, the bed, the floor, um, it's about comfort and relax. Now, here's what you need to know. I, for example, am a very traditional space learner. That is not to say that I don't want to sit in my comfy chair or on the couch or propped up in my bed and study. I would love that. But the difference is, if I'm in the traditional setting, if I'm at my desk or at the dining room table, what I'm reading, I am comprehending. If I change to a comfortable, relaxed area, I lose my focus. And nine times out of ten, within five minutes, I'm asleep. Now, the exact opposite is true for those that truly need that non-traditional, relaxed area. If you're sitting, if you're flopped out on your bed studying, you're completely focused. You're doing great. You're not sleepy. If we move you to a desk or the dining room table, suddenly you lose your focus. And within five minutes, your mind has wandered and a lot of you are, are dozing off. So it's important to find which way you're really wired. Now, as we go through these, I want you to think about when you are studying something that is the hardest for you to comprehend. Okay, so let's say that you are a math and science person. I don't want you to be thinking about math and science homework when you're thinking about where you study. I want you to think about that history class, that reading for that class you really struggle with, or English. Um, think about your hardest subject, the, hard, the one that's the hardest for you to comprehend, the hardest to stay focused, the hardest for you to retain that material you're trying to learn. All right, so here's a little test I want you to do. I want you to find out, and this is for your homework, I want you to spend five minutes trying to read at a traditional um, setting, a desk, a table and chair. Try it for five minutes and then check in with yourself about how much you remember about what you just read. Then I want you to, to shift and go to the non-traditional, a more relaxed area, the couch, the bed, the floor. Try that for five minutes. And at the end of five minutes, I want you to check in with yourself. It's a good idea for you to keep like a notebook or some paper and truly jot down your findings. This is kind of like a little scientific research. So the first one is study area. All right, the second factor that can influence learning style is lighting. So the type of lighting and the intensity of that lighting is important. Um, some of you are going to find that you're the bright light people. You have to have bright light in order to learn. Um, some of you are going to find that you are the dim light people. You work best in a room that's dimly lit. You probably got a lot of grief over the years because your mom, your grandma, somebody would walk in and say, and turn on light saying, it's too, you don't have enough light in here to be studying. And think about what happened. The minute the lights came on, what happened? You lost your focus. Versus bright light people, we have to have it really bright in order to learn. And if anybody dims the lights, ooh, it's nap time. We are ready to go to sleep. 
the type of lighting that's being used is also extremely important and we have so many options today sure there's the natural light uh, you can go outside and study um, you can study by sitting by a window there's also fluorescent light like you have in most traditional classrooms and in libraries and in a lot of the places of business you have that fluorescent lighting and then there's incandescent lighting um, the types of different lights you can get from li traditional regular light bulbs in I say regular light bulbs, but I mean, we have LED light bulbs now. We have the old incandescent. Um, there's a soft, warm glow, or there's that <coughs> kind of blue-white light. You have to find which one works better for you um, and play around with some different lighting. Conditions that involve um, light sensitivity, you could actually have a condition like dyslexia, which might impact um, how you can study based on your sensitivity to light. There's scotopic sensitivity um, that also, for some people, they when they see a piece of white paper that has you know, the typed word on it or written word on it, the paper itself is so white and blaring to folks that have the scotopic sensitivity or Erlen syndrome. It's distracting. They see more of the white of the paper margins than they do of the, the, the ink on the paper. Um, and there are other conditions that involve light sensitivity. So your second element that you need to do a little scientific research on is lighting. Okay, start simple. Um, five minutes in a bright light situation, trying to read and comprehend, then move to a, a dimly lit situation. Five minutes, see how well you can read and comprehend. If you find that you need um, bright light, then play around with some different kinds of light. If you find that you need dim light, play around with some different situations that would be dim light, whether that be natural light, fluorescent, whatever. Same with bright light. See which one works best for you. All right, noise and sound are also extremely important. Um, the big question is do, to have sound or not to have sound. Now, again, I love music. I want music. Okay, all the time I want music. But the reality is I get so distracted by my music when I'm trying to study that music isn't really the best thing for me. I will spend more time listening to the music and losing my focus than I will actually accomplishing anything. Now, some people, and I used to be this way, okay, um, I used to be the person that could not have any sound whatsoever, okay? Um, over the years, though, I have changed a little bit. When I had children, the house was never quiet. So I have learned to deal with some sounds, but they have to be muffled. They have to be in the distance. Um, some people, it's just completely quiet. You can't have anything. Other people, they might need this, what we call white noise, the sound of the ceiling fan or the air condition, um, the sound of uh, rain or something else um, versus people that truly need some kind of noise. Now, I'm going to tell you there are different types of noise. There's the, the background noise. Um, there is the... Um, there is the white noise, there's music, but I'll tell you that usual playlist that you have, probably not going to be what you can listen to when you study. Um, you know, music can evoke me memories and emotions. And if that song comes on and it reminds you of when she dumped you or when something or even something when something bad, good happened, it's still it's taking your attention away. Now, I, I know that classical music is supposed to be awesome for um, studying, but when I listen to it, it just agitates me. I love classical music at other times, but I can't listen to it while I'm studying. There are playlists out there that are for focus. 
So look at your streaming service that you might use for music or look at whatever music source you use. If they offer some pre-done playlists, look and see if they have some. Um, I can listen to some, some smooth jazz or other instrumental things that don't have words. Um, other times, I can listen to a real upbeat soundtrack that I love. Um, and it just motivates me and I, I work really well. It just depends on that day and that time. So do some experiments. Try five minutes with some noise. Try five minutes without noise. If you find you need noise, then try some different things. At our house, we're polar opposites. My husband has to have the TV on when he's working. And I try to sit in there with them and I get involved in the show. I'm not paying attention. So that doesn't work for me. But I can go in another room at the other end of the house. I can still hear the noise of the TV, but I'm far enough away that that has become background noise. So play around with some of those. The time of day is also an important consideration. We have this thing called a biorhythm. And some of us are more alert early in the morning. Um, some of us don't really wake up and clear the fog till mid-morning or early afternoon. Some of you are more the late afternoon or evening people. Some of you are late night. When I was younger, I would get my second wind about 11 p.m. And from 11 to 1 a.m., I could get more homework done in just those few hours than I could trying all day. Um, but I chose a profession where I get up very early. And so my body has retrained itself. So I will get up at 3.30 or 4 and grade papers and get so much more done early in the morning before I go to work than if I try to do it late at night when my brain is tired and is shutting down. Find the best time of day when you are most focused. Take your classes during that time or study during that time. Um, for those of you that are night owls, maybe you should be taking night classes because that's when you're most effective. Um, but play around with different times of day, you know, and see which time works best for you to study and comprehend. So if you think about your, your situation in a traditional classroom, Basically, you don't have any choice. You walk in the class, maybe the lights are bright, they're fluorescent, um, you don't, there's no, there are desks, there's no comfortable place to sit. Well, you're not going to be able to walk in and say, hey, this isn't working for me, I need to bring in my comfy chair. It doesn't work like that, right? And there are different teaching styles um, from your various professors, and they may not mesh with your personal learning style. Um, you could have somebody that just talks all period, never gives a visual. Um, you may have all kinds of situations, but remember, that's only 10% of your learning. That other 10% is happening. That's The other 90% is happening outside of the class and is up to you. So you can't control what's happening in the classroom, but you can control what you're studying. Remember, no matter what your learning style is, you need to be involved in class, link the classroom experience to the outside world, relate class concepts to your own life, ask questions, offer criticism, um, take part in discussions, stay on task, keep an open mind. All of life is learning. It never stops. So you, you remember you're in control of that. Now, in Blackboard, you have all kinds of, beyond just these links, you have all kinds of links to um, several different types of questionnaires or survey, surveys or learning style inventories. Those are going to help you pinpoint your learning style. And you'll also, once you figure out what your learning style is, you will be completing a discussion post on your findings and it'll be interesting for you to see what other students have discovered as well in some of your commonalities. I hope that um, you've learned something from this, this video and I wish you all the best in finding your learning style so that you can study more effectively and you can probably cut your study time in half if you are doing things the way that you need to do things. Thank you and work on the rest of your learning styles materials in the learning styles module.